Hey everyone, this is Stephen Van Camp and Lewis. It is uh, Saturday the 12th of December in 2020. And today <clears throat> I wanna do a little bit of a follow-up to the, the Wakariana and Nobilior um, spike video that I did uh, probably, probably close to three weeks ago at this point. Um, <clears throat> I wanna show you some of the spikes that are, are ongoing, uh, some that have aborted, and, and some, some other Nobilior and Wakariana kind of stuff. Um, but before that, I, I, I'm just gonna walk through the greenhouse real quick and show y'all a, a quick update on, on where my catacetums are and some of the other plants. So as we walk into the greenhouse, you'll see that the certipodiums are finally starting to lose their leaves. Um, and I probably won't, I probably won't water these guys I don't know if at all until they have new growths in the spring and they're okay with that. Um, <clears throat> my catacetums are finally starting to lose their leaves in, in at least a, a noticeable amount, which is good. Um, seedlings are doing well. I've got this nice uh, Brassavola nodosa crossed to subulifolia and then back to subulifolia, I think. Um, which smells really nice at night. Oh, if I can zoom in, you guys can see all the ants. Hard at work. Um, some people don't like them. They don't seem to bother me. They feed the, um, the anoles that are in here all winter. And the anoles eat the pests, so... Hope we get a little bit of a symbiotic relationship going. <clears throat> My, um, tropical pointer cheetah. Right there, the Callistoglossa is finally decided to give up. Um, but the whole point of today's discussion is over here. Oh, before we talk about that, I've got this standard cymbidium that's spiking. So the idea that you can't flower standard cymbidiums in Texas is not true. I have bloom this one several times. But more interesting stuff is over here. So let's let's start with this little guy. If you recall, this is a, a small imported nobilior um, that I said was too small to be spiking and it's probably a growth, but boy was that growth pointed. Uh, and I was right, it's true. It, it's not a spike, this is a growth. And you can tell, you can see the leaf starting to split there and turn into a new growth. So distinguishing between new growth and a spike is not super easy. Uh, I had, I have a large Wakariana, uh, that's this guy over here, and it was spiking and had buds coming out. Those buds have aborted. Let's see if I can come around here and zoom in for you on that sad, Sad story of aborted buds right there. I'm not really sure why that is. Um, but it is what it is. I kind of wonder if Wakarianas don't like this position. Uh, my neighbor has a light on for at least part of the night. And um, Harry uh, Akagi over H&R Orchids has mentioned online several times that he believes that Wakarianas are exceptionally sensitive to nighttime lights disturbing their photo, uh, their their blooming period. So if there's even a street light nearby, um, they, that will prevent them from blooming. And I wonder if that's happening here. Um, <clears throat> have, I don't see any of my other Wakarianas spiking, so you know, we'll see as the, the season progresses. Um, you know, I've seen them bloom in the spring. It's less common, but it's it certainly still happens. Um, so we'll see. If I don't get blooms from my Wakarianas this year, um, to me, that would be the, the main reason. So we'll see. Of interest is a Brazilian jewel that is spiking here, and it's got a little scrawny bud coming out. Right here, I don't know why uh, it's doing that. It's also got another spike right here. 
So we'll see if those abort. Um, whenever I see small buds coming out of the sheath like that, I am not super excited about it. Uh, I always assume it will blast, and yeah, sometimes it sometimes that's not true. Um, but if it doesn't blast, sometimes you get a kind of a weird looking bloom. So who, who knows? Here's an odd thing to happen. Not a bloom spike, but a brand new growth on a, a nobilior that has decided it's going to rot and become squishy for no apparent reason. I'm not sure why. Um, it's got a seed pod somewhere else. This is an Alba. Uh, I was hoping to have this one grow into this pot and then I could divide it. And you can see that that is still a possibility on the next growth and the, there's new roots going into that pot. So when I finally divide this, it won't be a shock to the plant. Um, and, and those are sort of the sad stories. Um, but if we look at my nobiliors, um, even just next door, great success story. They're super happy. This is a, a cerulean nobilior that I got from Francisco Miranda many years ago. And it is just huge, huge, huge. You can see that these bulbs are way bigger than they should be. Uh, this plant is just a monster. And these bulbs are, are the biggest nobiliar bulbs that I have ever, ever, ever seen. And you can see I've got it established in this pot. So this spring, I'll cut it here and a friend of mine has already uh, agreed to grab this one. But you can see the buds coming in there. So remember I showed you that anemic little bud earlier on that Brazilian jewel with this guy here, this is what you want to see. So this is uh, at least, there's four buds coming out of there. So four buds on a single bloom for a, a nobilior is really good, uh, especially considering if it's got a seed pod hanging from it, you can kind of see it. You can see that seed pod way in the back over there. So to have this guy holding a seed pod while blooming with a spike with four flowers on it, is really really great i thought there was maybe another one but i could be wrong anyway that's one of the success stories uh, another spike over here on this plant in the back this is a a, a, tip, a tipo a, a typical nobilior just a, a standard pink from here i can see one two three maybe four spikes and as you can see, there's some buds right there coming out of that sheath. Some buds right here. A spike way in the back. So I can't really reach that far, but you can see it right there. And then, uh, oh yeah, uh, of interest is, check out that spike. This one has turned into a growth and a spike. So you can see those three buds coming out of the plant right there, right there. Uh, and there is a, a leaf that is forming. So that will be both, uh, most likely what will happen is that will have a, a spike with those with those buds blooming. I can see three here on the, on the camera. Uh, and it'll have a small leaf on top of it. So that leaf will be single. Uh, it won't be a double in the same way that uh, most normal growths are, um, and it will um, it will be smaller than that. And actually, I can see even behind that is another one. I'm going to point to it here. You can see it right there. Same thing's going on. You can see the leaf. So we're, what you're looking at there is the back half of that spike with a small leaf. If I was able to get the camera around either side, which I cannot. Um, you would see buds coming out of, of that leaf over there. So um, I do want to mention that having all of my ceruleas, like, excuse me, all of my nobilioras like this, spiking is really, really, really early. Um, and then I've got another cerulea that my friend gave me here. Uh, he got this many years ago. He used to live in Florida. I believe he got his from Michael Sin. This might be from Francisco or Michael Sin. I, I don't remember. 
but you can see that this one is also spiking right there at the base of that bulb. So there's one there, and then I saw another growth earlier. So uh, as I said, this is a, a very strange, strangely early. I mean, I don't normally see this advanced growth until about March on my um, my Nobiliores for blooming. So it's really, really an unusual year. My Nobiliores are blooming when the Wakarianas are typically blooming. And uh, my Wakarianas are not blooming. So, you know, I don't really understand what's going on. I'm trying to look through the leaves here to see if I can see any more spikes to point out to you. Uh, I've got a bunch of small nobilio excuse me nobiliores and mostly wakarianas right in here uh, these are imports from my friend luis um, in brazil and they are all doing really nicely you can see this is the cross that he made two of his two of his best um and he is expecting great things from these the, the photos that he has shown me of of the siblings that have bloomed already are just absolutely amazing so uh, i got he sent me six of those, I think. So I'm excited to see those bloom. But yeah, so care this time of year. These guys don't need much water. Um, I am watering them once a week or once every other week at this point. I'm trying to do so in the morning. If you recall, during the growing season, I water in the evening, in the late afternoon or evening. So they have plenty of water going into night, which is when they do a lot of their respiration um that's flipped this time of year so this time of year i like to water them in the morning so they can have a little bit of time to dry out before uh things get cool in the evening uh, my, my heaters is uh, doing well at keeping things at about 55 degrees at night and so i, I like to give them a, a head start in drying off for those kinds of temperatures Wakarianas are just fine with cold temperatures, even down to freezing. Nobiliores are much more sensitive. They do not appreciate that. And uh, they do not appreciate cold temperatures. And they'll handle them just fine. But if they're blooming, they, I've seen some wonky blooms come out on spikes that have been exposed to cool temperatures. And by cool temperatures, I mean, you know, below 50 or so. Um, so... That's everything. That's another update. Uh, I think the next update for these guys will, will just be the blooms. There, there's really no reason to show you uh, spikes over and over again. I don't want to bore anyone. Um, so, enjoy.